Good morning, folks. We're finally seeing the umbral magnetic fields of that sunspot turning away. We've got storms, top news, and a must-see video, but we're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day somewhat quieter on the Earth-facing side. No sunspots, but we do have those southern coronal holes turning through. Solar wind at Earth is somewhat fluctuating, but doing so in low-intensity range, which is why geomagnetic conditions are pretty much silent. Let's take a look at the two CMEs we did get over the weekend. Each was relatively small, but everything looks big and gorgeous here on the close-in C2 Soho Lasco frames. Here's the second one, slightly more bulky, but with a slightly slower ejection speed. I do love the gray differential views when they pick up the fine detail. Next, let's back out to the C3 frames, showing how small these eruptions are in the grand scheme of things. They are getting embedded in the slow solar wind and dissipating. Earthquake struck this morning in the Philippines. The depth lessened the felt effects at the surface, but distributed them over a slightly wider range. We're going next to Spain. Major storms have hit the white coast and caused considerable amounts of flooding and wind damage. This is indeed the most extreme spring storm to hit Costa Blanca in decades. In three days, they got more rain than they had the entire 2019 up to that point. So what does it take to make a major solar flare? complex sunspots. A study of massive beta gamma delta active regions has shown that two-thirds of M-class flares and about half of all X-class flares are coming from the massive beta gamma delta groups. You can learn more by clicking Suspicious Observers here on YouTube and going to our channel page. Scroll down to find the Sun Series playlist. Learn about sunspot magnetic classification. It's important. We looked at one major coastal storm, but now we're taking a historical view. From the year 1650 to 1700, there were incredible storms and beach erosion in southeast Australia. We saw the first repeat of that level of storm in the 70s, could see more in the coming years, and the prediction is for them to repeat cyclically. Informative piece up next on space weather and human health. It is part review and part roadmap looking forward, but also delivers excellent reminders about short-term and long-term dosage concerns. And they have noticed that women have a 200 to 300 percent greater lifetime risk for cancer from this type of radiation than do men. In a wonderful confirmation of galactic science, the X-shaped bulge near the galactic center has been confirmed. This feature is sculpted by the Bennett Pinch nearby, also called Z-Pinch or X-Pinch, and it is indicative of the staying power of the plasma instability throughout the long lifespan of the galaxy. Folks, I want to take a moment to congratulate Terence Allen on nailing the 6.8 earthquake prediction in Indonesia 10 days ago. 95% significance level, and he has predicted a number of larger quakes over at QuakeWatch.net. He is one of the top six contributors there. And speaking of earthquake forecasting, folks, it is official that our first long-term magnitude 7 forecast was a success. The video last night details the forecast. It is linked for you right below this video. The three things predicted in the sequence and how they all happened perfectly. Please watch and share. This has been four years in the making to try that publicly. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 4.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.